thank you for coming. Um, Supersonic Subatomic GitHub. Um, you know, we're going to talk about GitHub apps using Quarkus. You probably know that since you're here, but um, my name is Jason Lee, Principal Software Engineer at Red Hat. Um, my website email address if you're curious. Um, so a little bit about me. I'll go and do that because I got those that markup wrong. But I'm Principal Software Engineer at Red Hat. I work primarily on the Wildfly application server. Uh, I work with Quarkus uh, kind of on the side because I enjoy it. Uh, but Wildfly is a great server, so if you need a full application server, you should check it out. Product pitch there. Um, Java Champion, um, as of last year, uh, president of Oklahoma City Java Users Group. If you're in Oklahoma City, want to meet with some geeks, uh, come check us out. Uh, author, Java 9 Programming Blueprints, and I know we just released Java 21 or whatever it was. But I put a lot of work into it, so I like to throw it on the slide just to... <laughs> uh, someday I'll take it off, we'll see. Uh, blogger, there you can see my, uh, my site. And then uh, just miscellaneous stuff. In case you're curious what I do in my free time, i uh, in the martial arts, I play bass guitar, and I like smoking meats. Yeah. <laughs> um, most importantly, though, here's my family. Uh, obviously me, my wife Angela, son Noah, and son Andrew, you know, some people like to a peek inside the private or the personal life of uh, of fellow geeks. So, uh, junior in high school, junior in college, both moving toward computer science degrees look like. So I've done my job right. And the rest of my family, which you can't read because that bleaches the color there, but that's our dog Sophie. There she is helping me with some of my end of the year wildfly stuff. So she's a fun dog. All right. So stupid stuff out of the way. Uh, what we're going to look at today is, uh, you know, what is a GitHub app? Maybe you don't know what that is. Uh, we'll talk briefly why you'd want to use Java, why would you want to use Quarkus, and finally we'll build the app. That's what we're here for. And I do have slides. I'm going to try not to spend too much time on the slides, but I have it there so later if you want to kind of come back and flip through what we're going, it's kind of condensed down for you. So don't worry too much about a slideshow. So a GitHub application. Uh, this is from the, the official uh, GitHub page. It says that GitHub apps can do things on GitHub like open issues, comment and pull requests, manage projects. That can, do th can also do things outside of GitHub based on events that happen on GitHub. Uh, so basically, you know, you're everybody familiar with GitHub Actions? So you, if you deal with your CI, CD, you've probably done a lot with Actions. It's a little bit like that, kind of amped up, and uh, I think typically self-hosted. Uh, Officially, the GitHub SDK uses JavaScript or TypeScript if you're so inclined, uh, but you don't have to, as we'll, as we'll see. Uh, so what might you do with a GitHub application? Um, issue validation, comments, you know, uh, PR format. We use this on the, the Wildfly project, so when someone opens up a pull request, uh, we'll check the, the comment to make sure, you know, there's a link to the, the JIRA issue. It's got, you know, these other boxes are checked, uh, just help give some uniformity uh, to our pull request to make sure we're getting information. We'll also do things like look at the changes and see where files were changed in the project and say, oh, well, Jason owns this module, Brian owns that one, and we'll tag the developers uh, on, the, on the PR so they can come in and, uh, and give a review. Um, you can control CIC jobs, interact with the issue tracker, send messages, you know, if you're using say Team City, or you want to send a Slack message or an SMS through uh, Twilio or, or, or what have you, you can do all, the, all that uh, in your application. It's really kind of whatever you want to do. As, as we'll see, this you know, it's, a, it's a completely self-hosted application. So however complex or simple your use case is, this will give you the opportunity to do that and react in mostly real time to what's going on on your GitHub repository. Uh, and I learned this week, uh, you know, Common House that Erin Schnabel just opened, she hates meetings. So they, they try to do as much as they can through GitHub discussions. And she's got a, a bot written using this that will watch those discussions and look at the thumbs up and thumbs down. And when the voting period is ended, she's got a tally of that and she kind of report that all uh, automated for her. She doesn't have to manage it. And then if that doesn't, if the discussion doesn't work, then they can have a meeting, but she's hoping to... <laughs> minimize the time having to sit through yet another meeting. So why would you want to use Java? You know, it's you, 
probably know this, but it's it's mature and battle tested. You know, we've all, if we're at this conference, spent at least some time, some of us a lot of time, learning Java and become comfortable with it. So we know, you know, the strengths. Um, we've got a great global community. This is a good example of that. Um, so there's no shortage of, of people to ask questions from. Uh, immense number of libraries and frameworks in in the context of a, a GitHub or a Quarkus based GitHub app. You have the the complete ecosystem at uh, at your disposal. Um, there's you know since it's running basically in your data center or your cloud, you can do really whatever you want to. So you don't have to throw all of that experience away and learn a JavaScript library. Uh, and also, it's not JavaScript, so uh, I kind of hate to bash on JavaScript, but I do. Uh, I don't know. It's not my favorite language, and if you like it. That's fine. I'm no, no judgment. I'm just not a real big fan. Um, so this, but this gives you an opportunity to leverage your existing experience without having learned something else. So, uh, so why Quarkus? Um, who here has used Quarkus already? At least vaguely familiar. Um, if you haven't used it, I think it's it's a great. If you well, if you're familiar with Spring Boot, you're familiar with where Quarkus sits in the in the Java ecosystem. Um, and you know it's got strengths and probably some weaknesses over Spring Boot, so I'm not here to debate that. But it's a, it's a great small light framework um, that makes writing microservices, REST, GraphQL, whatever, super easy. We do a lot of work at build time to make it really fast, and it starts up super super quick, uh, low memory usage, high performance. So um, anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So again, leverages existing Java, JVM knowledge. Uh, especially if you're already familiar with Quarkus, you will find writing a GitHub app really simple. If you're not familiar with Quarkus, uh, you'll see that Quarkus really doesn't show itself much in your application once you've gotten it created. It's basically just a whole bunch of Java, uh, Java functional methods uh, with maybe some CDI, it's kind of depending on what you're wanting to do. Full CDI integration, so if you have a you know, say you're using Twilio or Slack and you want to inject the, the objects to interact with that, you can have your producer or whatever to, uh, to read your config, uh, your, like your credentials from a config file, create the object and inject it into your, uh, into your handler, uh, just like you would normal in any uh, regular Java uh, application. It's easily unit testable, which I think is pretty cool. That's one of my first questions is, like, well, can I test this? And uh, we'll look at a, a very simple test, um, but uh, you can test this separate from uh, integrating or uh, interacting with GitHub directly. Native compilation, if that's super important to you, you can still compile this down to a native executable and deploy it wherever you need to, um, or you can just deploy the whole jar. It's, it's completely up to you. All right, so building a GitHub app, uh, I'll run through these points real quick and then we'll switch to doing it live and, and hope the, uh, the internet is kind to us. So you need to register the app with GitHub. You know, it's pretty simple, uh, not real unexpected. It's got to know how to interact. Um, and you tell it where to send the messages to, that sort of thing, which you'll see. You install it uh, and, you know, here we'll have a playground project. You tell, I want to, uh, I want to pay attention to all the repositories in this account or a specific uh, project and we'll just do a specific repo. Uh, to keep things simple. And then go to the Quarkus app, uh, which we'll see is super simple. And profit, uh, we can't uh, leave that off the list. And you actually can if you want to sell it. Um, but GitHub does have a marketplace where you can list your, your app for a license. I'm not real familiar with that. Um, so you can just do it for internal uses or if you want to try to make some money off of it, you can actually list it and sell it, all right? All right, so I'll jump out of the slides. That's the, uh, that's the wrong button. It's close. I, I did it again. There we go. All right. So if you go to this page, you can see I've got a, an existing demo still up there. Uh, this is where you create the GitHub app. And this is where we will define some metadata that GitHub is going to need to uh, basically talk to your application. So we'll start there. We'll, we click. Uh, New GitHub app. I did this earlier to make sure I wouldn't have to do this during my presentation, and here we are. I don't know how long that takes to time out, and hopefully, 
Oh, good. I'm getting service in here. All right, we're in. Okay. So there are a lot of options on this page. Uh, some of them you can fill out, but you don't have to. And you can kind of see that form. Well, it really does bring out a lot of those details. Um, there are only a few that are really necessary that we'll fill out now. We'll give it a name. We'll call this DevNexus 2024 Demo Homepage. You know, if you're if you're trying to market this, uh, you might have a, a homepage for the application. Um, I'm not obviously so I'm just gonna put my uh, my personal site on there. It's required, so you gotta you have to put something. And we'll scroll down past a lot of this stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on those details. But the webhook URL is uh, is the important one. That's what uh, GitHub is going to send these requests to when a certain events happen. And obviously, we're here at a conference. We're behind a firewall. You probably are too when you're developing. So you have to find some way to get on the firewall, um, unless you just really want to open up a port, which I uh, would not recommend. But fortunately. Um, GitHub provides SME.io, and if you're familiar with Peter Pan, I think this is a terrible geek joke. If you're familiar with Peter Pan, right, his nemesis is Captain Hook, we've got webhooks, and Captain Hook's right-hand man is SME. So I'm just guessing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run with it because I think it's a great story. Uh, so this is free. Um, it's not secure, so do not run <laughs> production code on this, but we're going to go to SME.io. And we're going to click create a new channel, or start a new channel there. And there we have it. All right, so we'll come back to this, but um, why well, that's significant. But we're gonna take that value and put it in the webhook URL here. If you, if you really want to, and then for production app, I would definitely suggest this, you can put a, a secret on there. So I think it, it supports uh, actual authentication, but you can put a a secret on there, kind of like dealing with any cloud service. You can verify that request coming in, have the correct secret, so you can help uh, eliminate any anyone trying to attack. Um, it's a bunch of options on there, SL, that's fine. Uh, for our purposes here, we'll, we'll just do a small set of the, of the permissions, but you can deal with repositories, the organization's account, really what, whatever you want to do. Um, but those are the, the three major things. Um, but we're just going to look at the uh, repository related stuff. Specifically, what we want to do is look at uh, issue creation and, uh, and maybe PR. Uh, probably won't have time to get to demo there. So we'll scroll down uh, to issues right here in the middle. And we're just going to select read and write. All right. And if you don't, obviously, you don't add the permission, then your, uh, your app can't perform certain actions. Um, and you have to opt into that, which is just basic security. So, but now, uh, now that we've told it what we want to do, we have to make sure we tell it what events we're actually interested in. It's not just going to spam app every time something happens. Um, we just want to listen to certain events. In our case, we want to know um, when, say, an issue is open. I don't know if you can read that or not. We'll zoom in so it's a little easier. So, an issue is open, edited, deleted, pretty much anything happens on a, a on an issue, we want an event sent to us on that. Uh, we also might be interested in issue comments. Come on, mouse. There we go. Uh, so anytime uh, someone creates, edits, or deletes a comment, we'll also get an event. And if you're just uh, a pull request is there somewhere. Well, we won't we'll get to pull requests. It doesn't matter. So, uh, and then you can. Where do you want this installed? If you're developing something internally, then maybe only on your, your company's account, or if you want to sell it, you can sell it anywhere. We'll select the default, because um, that's the only one that really matters for us right now. So we click the Create GitHub account, and we'll go back. Now we're, we're here, the app is created, and we're almost done on GitHub. Two things we need to do is we need to generate a private key, and that will encrypt all the, the payloads so we're not exposing anything uh, on the wire. So you click that button, and then click Generate Private Key, and it'll allow us to download it. Make sure you save that somewhere, 
because you won't get another chance. You have to delete the key and recreate it. And we'll use that, uh, that key file in just a minute. All right, so once we've done that, let me run through the slides here. I've got some, some information on the generating a, a, a secret if you really want one, just kind of see how that goes. That little Ruby script is what they suggest. Um, just needs to be something random and secure. Um, Notes on the webhook, Captain Smee here. So to create the actual Quarkus side of things, we're going to use the, the Quarkus app. Um, it's a command line tool. Um, if you use an SDK man, for example, you can SDK install Quarkus, and they'll install that for you, add it to the path. Um, so that's where it's coming from. Uh, I've not gone into that here, uh, just to kind of keep it simple. Let me try to quit moving so I quit moving. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Uh, so this, this is the command to create a, a Quarkus app. And for the most part, this is the last, this is the most you'll see of Quarkus. Right, there's no Quarkus API specifically you need to, to implement. Uh, you just need to run this and basically just tell it, create, it, create an app. We're going to use the, the Quarkus GitHub app extension. We give it a package, or a group ID and a, an artifact name uh, for, for Maven and tell it to generate no code. Otherwise, it'll generate some sample code. Uh, but I just don't want to deal with that. So to see what that looks like, We'll go to a console here. All right, and I already have, you can't see that. How's that? Okay, so this, I mean, this, the same command line, it's all in one line. Um, I've updated the, the package name, but you run that. Target already exists. I didn't clean up my demo environment. Shame on me. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. Bam, super fast. Um, so it's going to put that in the uh, that directory so we can just see the end of that. Uh, now we're going to do one thing that's a little ugly. Not ugly, it's just uh, I do it from the command line because I find it easier. We need to create a .env file. And this is going to contain some information that tells uh, Quarkus, when it starts up, uh, how to talk to the, um, how to talk to GitHub. The app ID will be super important, and a webhook proxy URL, which will, will be used for, um, for dev mode. We'll see in just a minute. When we fire this up, it's going to take that, you know, that channel we started on SME.io, it's going to take that and start polling that to get the results. That'll allow us to get outside or get data from outside the firewall without having to uh, ask our network admins to, to punch holes in it or put our machine right on the internet. So to make this easier, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And I'm gonna do it in VI because it's the world's best editor. We'll just kind of clean this up a little bit. Now the app ID, you can get that by if you go to your the, the page for your uh, GitHub app. That value right there. So that's where that number comes from. So we'll copy that. We'll paste that in. This is not super important. Call that. Give the proxy URL, which again is right here. So we'll copy and paste that in. Webhook secret, we didn't configure one. We're not going to bother checking that. So we'll just ignore that. And this is where it gets a little, uh, a little ugly. There might be a better way to do that, but um, this is the way I like doing it. So we'll just read that file in. And then since this is a properties file that spans multiple lines, we'll put a bunch of slashes on there. <laughs> All right. 
I hope I did that right. I, when I was running through my demo, I put the slash the wrong way, and uh, it didn't like that, ironically. Um, all right, so I, we should be, unless I've forgotten something, we should now be done on GitHub and from the command line. So we're going to fire up idea, because it's a great editor. Uh, so far as I've got ultimate, but so far as I know, if you're running community, you should have access to everything you need on this. Don't quote me on that, but if not, uh, go buy a license. <laughs> uh, it's worth it. All right, so here we are in our, our app. You see it created a basic structure. It's got Docker files. If you want to eventually package this up as an image and deploy to you know, Kubernetes or OpenShift or AWS or you know, wherever you want, it's got all that built up for you. It's just a, a regular, plain old Java project. So let's create our first class. And to save me typing, we'll put this in the org acne package. We'll create a, create a class called issue processor. Nothing magical about that name, of course, but allows us to kind of group things uh, logically. Like I said, the handlers that you're going to write are just kind of boring Java functions. So um, we don't have to do any special plumbing. We're just going to create, let's say, public void on opened. All right, and CDI is what's kind of powering all this, you know, so we just need to put some annotations on there so it can wire in the, um, uh, the observer kind of around invoke type thing. So we're gonna say um, at issue, notice that's a, uh, the, that is a, a Quarkus API, but annotations we want uh, at issue and we want opened. So we're going to listen for the issue opened event on this method. If you want to, you can put multiple annotations on there and handle them all in one, but we'll do on opened. And our type is going to be the GH event payload. We want an issue, the issue payload. We'll just call that payload, if I can spell. All right, and that's, yes. The palm file, sure. It's uh, nothing super exciting. It does set up some dependencies on Quarkus and on the, uh, the GitHub app extension. Adds a uh, basic JUnit dependency, and then just it's the normal Quarkus build stuff. Yep. And there's native profile. So if you're familiar with Corcus palms, there's nothing real special in there, not a lot of not a lot of magic. All right, so now this is set up for us to respond to uh, issues being opened. Again, if I've done my job right here. So uh, just for demo purpose, let's say we're just going to add a comment anytime an issue is opened. So we call payload, we want to get issue, I think that's type GH issue or something, and we're just going to comment. Hello from Dev Nexus. I have had for years issues typing in front of people, so forgive me. <laughs> uh, it does throw exceptions, so you know, idea very helpfully explains that to us. So that's our handler, right? So let's go back. Uh, we actually do have one more thing we need to do uh, on GitHub. Well, first, we need a repository. So we'll go over here and just create. The demo. Public rest of it matter. All right, so we've got a repository. There's nothing in it, but that's fine for now. So we go to our app and we need to make sure we, like I so said, we install this in an account. In this case, we're just going to install it in, a, in my personal account. And we're going to say only a specific repository. And then we'll pick that. All right, now we should be ready. So in idea, let's go and start up. There's a couple of ways you can do this in dev mode. If you're familiar with Quarkus, you can do it from the command line with Quarkus dev. 
use the, the CLI tool, or if you're not, you don't have that installed, you can use Maven with the uh, Corcus Dev um, Mojo and Goal, however you want to do it, or if you're in IDEA, and it may do this for Eclipse and NetBeans, if you're using those, I really don't know because I, I just don't use them, but it does set up some, uh, some targets here that you can run and debug from your IDE. So we'll do that, kind of resize things here a little bit. The other window went away. So it looks like it started happily, I hope. So let's create an issue and see how this goes. Test issue. All right. So we submit it. Now, if I've done things right in a minute, bam, hello from DevNexus. So that, that's literally all there is to it. You know, if there's more complexity than what for your use case, it's in the app. Uh, and you can add that complexity if you want. Absolutely not necessary, though. Um, like I said, we've got, uh, on the Wildfly bot, we've got some regular expression stuff that'll take the PR comment and, and run the check. And if there's an error, it'll put a big, ugly comment on there. And you can, do, you can put reactions on there so you get little cool little graphics or emojis on there. But that's it. What's also kind of cool, like I said, since uh, this creates the, I, the IDE configuration for us, we can debug this. So if I come over here, We'll create a new issue because that's all we're listening to right now. Test issue two. Hit submit. Wait a second. Bam, there we are. Now we're in the middle of our uh, event handler and we can debug it just like we would uh, any other uh, application, standalone, you know, SE application or a EE, you know, whatever it is. We have, we can debug it just like we normally would. And you can look at the payload and see you know, what does that actually look like in, on the wire, more or less? And you can go to the Java docs and look at the, uh, what the Java API looks like if you want. But if you want to see what does the data itself look like, you know, you can dig through here. Um, we can see the action is open. Uh, sender, we've got login information, um, avatar URL, you know, a bunch of different stuff if you want that. And if we have time, uh, we'll kind of dig into that. Um, so you can do, you can see all sorts of things about the event, um, especially like if you have this installed in multiple repositories, multiple uh, organizations, you can see where you're running and make, make decisions uh, on that if you need to. Um, so we'll just go and let that run. Um, and it sets a comment. Um, yes. With what? I'm sorry. I, in, Ingra? Oh, Ingrok. I'm not familiar with that. So see me after and explain what that is and see if I can answer your question. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's the basic setup. Super easy. There's nothing real special. And as you, as you can see, there's other than this annotation, to kind of wire in that event handling. There's not a, there's nothing real quirkacy about it. Um, you know, obviously there's going to be some footprint, but there's not a lot of APIs that you've got to jump through. It's just annotate a Java function and run it. Um, it's not an EE anything. It's just running uh, under uh, standard SE uh, JRE basically. So uh, so we've got that. Uh, but obviously not all use cases are, are that simple. Um, it might be, uh, there's the copy of the code, so later if you come back, you'll see an example. Uh, you might wanna configure your application, and especially if this is deployed in multiple repositories, uh, you may have a per repository uh, configuration you want, or if you have config chain that changes fairly frequently, you don't have to go to where the app is deployed and change it and reload, whatever. You can actually configure that in the repository. Uh, and the, uh, the framework supports uh, doing that. You just create a file uh, in the .github directory. If you're, if you're doing workflows on GitHub already, you're probably familiar with that. And just create a file 
uh, bot, botconfig.yaml. If you like YAML, if not, you can do JSON, you can uh, do plain text. I don't know how plain text would work. You may just get like a big blob of text that you get to parse. Uh, I didn't try because it seemed kind of weird, but it supports it if, if you find a use case for that. Um, and the, uh, the framework will automatically deserialize or yeah, deserialize that for you so that uh, rather than dealing with raw JSON, you can have a type safe object to work with. And what that looks like is this. Uh, all you've got to do is create uh, just a class that defines a structure. In this case, we've got a, we've got a nested config. Uh, that's not super interesting, but uh, to show that you can do that. And we've got a, a list of strings called can comment. And we'll deal with that here in just a minute. Uh, and then we define the structure for the nested config. And if you have a, a YAML file that is structured correctly, you're, you're going to get an object as two properties on it, nested and can comment as the values from, uh, from your repository. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to come here. I'm, I feel like I'm flying too close to the sun on this, but I'm going to try to do everything live if I can figure out how to create a file. Import code. It may not let me, want me to do that, so let's do this. Thank you. You can tell I don't use this. Just the right amount of UI. I don't want a tour. Mark that. Come on. All right. In a repository with actual content, there's a button to click to create a new file, and I was missing that. So the dangers of live coding. Open folders is not supported. All right, there we go. Create a new file. Nope. We're going to stick with the ammo just for brands. So we want We'll create our nested config and can comment. We'll put me on there. Commit those. All right, so we've got our config file. Now we need to tell Corcus how to get a hold of that. So to do that, we just add this parameter to our. Notice I haven't haven't defined that yet, so let's fix that. All right, so now it's happy. Now I will say, you know, full CDI integration. I was trying to like just at inject that in my class, um, but it does not support that, so. If you're thinking that's what you want to do and you're going to go try it, let me save you some trouble. <laughs> uh, I talked to, uh, to, to Guillaume, the guy that wrote all this, and he said this, this doesn't support that now. So it does have to be a parameter injection. 
But now every, um, every event we receive, we'll get the payload for the event and we'll get a type safe representation of our config file. Uh, in theory, I shouldn't have to restart this because uh, Quarkus does do the, the live reload and dev mode, but if you use Quarkus, you're familiar with, but just to make sure, I'm going to restart it. And we are debugging, very good. Let's try creating a new issue. Are we going on time? Okay. Okay, so I didn't break anything. That's always encouraging. So here is our config file. You see the values rendered in our YAML. We've got our list of people that can comment on an issue. Pretty awesome. Um, so we'll go and let this run. It's going to um, no comment on the issue, which is fine. But let's do something with that can comment, just to kind of give you a, a better example of what you might do. So we'll create another public void function uh, on, uh, on issue comment. Issue comment dot created. Payload to be a little different. Issue comment. I may just get to the point where I leave the typos, so if you see me do that, you know I got tired of correcting myself. Um, so we'll get the payload and we'll inject that config file so we can kind of react to that. So when that payload comes in, we call payload.getComment. I think it is logging. That's it. Okay, so there we've got the login of the user that created the comment. And then we can say, if not, config file dot can comment contains. That's a pretty full feature and idea, but it, it's the wrong suggestion. So. <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. Uh, we get the comment and let's delete it. Um, now I will, I'll warn you, I won't show it here just because you know, there's no sense in me annoying about it, I guess. But I found out the hard way that when you, when you like above, uh, get issue dot comment, it's going to create a comment and you are immediately going to get an event that a comment was created. And I learned, I learned the hard way that uh, when I delete the comment, I, I tried adding, you know, add a, I'm sorry, you can't comment on this issue or, you know, whatever you may want to say. I got an event for that comment. Well, the user for that comment is bot. It was not in my list of people that can comment. So it deleted that comment, added one that you can't comment, and it was just a constant loop. So if you're thinking of doing something like that, be aware that you're going to have to do some logic here to not respond to, uh, to bot stuff. Um, again, I'm just going to restart that just to be sure. And we'll come here. Um, we'll debug that so we can watch it happen. Hopefully. All right, I got my event set up correctly. All right, so here we are in our comment. We're going to get the login, which is Jason D. Lee, as it should be. And we can evaluate that. So it does contain the login, so it's going to allow it to go through, kind of step through. Nothing happens. All right, but to show this in action, let's go back here to our code and edit our config file. Change the login name there. Commit it.
another test. Quick comment. Breakpoint fires. Now if we look at our config file, we can see can comment uh, is updated there. So now, in theory, I shouldn't be able to comment. Look at our watch. That is some can comment. There we go. So now, can comment results in false, to, to false, so we get the comment, we delete it, and off we go. Refresh that. And I've just deleted the comment, so pretty fancy. Um, so, but you can do, that's just kind of, a, kind of a goofy example of some things that you can do with, um, uh, with the, the API. You know, in theory, you might use GitHub permissions to do that sort of thing. But if you've got some sort of fine-grained thing, you know, users in this organization can't comment on this, whatever. It gives you just a little more control uh, that might be uh, more organizationally aware of them than what you can. So that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, any, any questions on that? Pretty straightforward and simple. Kind of cool. All right, so testing. I promise that you can uh, unit test this. Currently, JUnit and Mockito are going to be your friends on this. They're the only libraries that are supported. Um, you know, if you have another library that you would like to use, it's an open source project, so <laughs> PRs are welcome. Uh, but these are what you're going to have to use for now. And here's an example. Uh, again, it's just if you're familiar with uh, Mockito, uh, and I'm marginally familiar with it. Uh, I don't do a lot with it, but uh, this is what the test looks like. We do have to annotate that it's a Quarkus test, it's a GitHub app test, and those two annotations are going to handle starting up your GitHub app in a, in a development mode, so you don't have to worry about is the, is the test, or is the app running, the framework will do all that for you. We're going to extend with Makito, so we get all that, that that happened, or all that does for us. And then here, uh, just it's a normal, uh, fairly typical uh, Makito in uh, execution. We're going to mock the config file, so we don't have to worry about getting that from GitHub. Uh, so we mock that. Uh, we're going to get the, the payload from the class path. And you might think, well, how do I get that payload? I'm glad you asked. The, uh, uh, well, yeah, quick note for some reason, when you create the extension, it doesn't add those two uh, dependencies that you're going to need. So you will need to add those, uh, and you'll need to create a couple of files. All right, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that now. Um, so the first you'll need to create is your uh, is your mock uh, config file. Technically, you don't uh, you don't have to create that. You can actually uh, create it in from your code and just and pass it in. But uh, if you want that on the command line uh, or from the, in your your source code, then you'll need to uh, load that from the class path. So we want to create not on main but from source. Create a directory, and test Java, and we'll create another directory for our resources. Okay, and to make this a little easier, I just copy and paste that so you don't have to sit through me typing again. What I call the example handler. All right, and since I don't have these packages, we'll copy and paste that in. You can see that beautiful palm again. Hopefully, I got that version number right. Ah, 
I was way off. Who knew? Go, well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. All right, so we've, we've added that. Um, so now uh, the ID should be happy. There we go. No, it should be happy. A bunch of import management. All right. So now the IDE is there. We go. See, a good IDE saves you all sorts of pain. So uh, worth the money. All right. Uh, so we want to create a, a a config file that we want to mock. So we'll go here, create new file. We'll do that. Now this other one, issue open.json, like where in the world does that come from? One of the great things about the uh, Quarks app framework is that it gives us the replay UI. Um, and what that's gonna do is allow us, if you imagine, to replay <laughs> events that are coming through. And what that looks like, you can see the, uh, got the URL there. <laughs> Waiting for events because I uh, haven't done anything since restarting it. But are we on four? All right, we've got a comment. Now, if we go back to the replay UI, which is right there, now we can see these are all the events that have come through to our app. And if we want to, I can I can just click replay. That's going to create. Well, just I can click replay and it's going to send that same payload through to my app and I can kind of debug. But obviously for testing, we don't want to have to leave this up and click replay all the time. It's not scalable and as soon as the app dies, this thing goes away. So what we can do, see you can view the payload. That's hard to read, but trust me, it's a giant JSON file. We can copy that and come back to our IDE. We'll create a file here called issue open.json. I think that's what I called it. We'll paste in, see that's 269 lines of beautiful JSON. Well, that's an action deleted. We don't want delete because uh, we want a, oh, can you see that there? It tells you the little blue tag, what kind of event you're seeing, so let's copy an issue created event. And if you're super curious, you can look at the, the JSON payload and see everything that's coming. Uh, so far as I know, everything you're seeing there is modeled in those uh, GH event payload classes. But uh, if not, you can get the raw JSON and extract that if you want to. Uh, we won't do that here. But So we have, um, yes. So we've got a test, we've got a, 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 a payload that we can test with. And I'm not 100% sure on this, so you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong if experiment with this, but in my experience with this, the issue number uh, kind of needs to match. So we'll look at our, our payload, we'll pull the issue ID there from the, uh, from the JSON and we'll update that. Here, so we need to make sure that, we'll see that's the fun part because now for some reason that number is too large. So we'll do this, we'll just override that with two. There, we'll make those match. So uh, when Makita goes to, to verify, it's gonna try to deal with the same object and if those ideas don't match, then the verification kind of blows up. Uh, took me a while to kind of figure that out. Not a Makita ex expert, so uh, caught me by surprise. Now, hopefully when this runs, uh, this is going to test the can comment part, uh, so that's not super important. But what we should see is a comment is added, and I need to make sure the text matches. And in you know, in real code, I would have this as a public static file somewhere and shared, so I don't have magic strings floating around. But 
since we're coding on the fly, we'll just make some compromises. So in theory, this should run. It will start up the app in, in a the test mode, it'll run this, and we can get thumbs up or thumb down. So here's hoping. Let's run test issue opened. We're running, ah, oh, and we're green. <laughs> uh, debugging Mojito failures is, uh, is not one of my favorite things to do. Uh, there's a warning there about Java 8 is not super important, but you can kind of see um, here the uh, you can see the Quarkus app starting up, and it finishes and it stops. All right. So if we uh, if we want to verify, let's just let's say someone changes the string, and again this is why you don't have magic string. If someone adds a punctuation or removes one. Uh, I actually had test fail years ago because someone changed punctuation. So uh, that one's near and dear to my heart. So we should see a test failure here because the comment does not match failure. All right, so you can write tests to verify all of your functions, run that in your GitHub CI CD <laughs> so that your app is properly tested. And if you go look at the documentation, they've got, you can mock just about anything. If you want to mock the issue or whatever, you can build those programmatically if for some reason you need a little more control over what the, the mocked issue looks like. You can go through all that. Um, I'm not going to spend time because we have seven minutes left. Uh, and I don't, like I said, I don't want to keep you from winning something cool. Um, but unit testing on this is super simple, if you're, especially if you're already mocking stuff and familiar with that. It's just, it, it leans on all of those uh, libraries and techniques that you, that you have likely been using uh, over your career. You don't have to learn something new. Very, very simple and lightweight. I think, yes, that's that's all I've got. So the QR code there at the bottom will actually link you to this exact presentation on my website that has those links. So we, if you want to, you can open that, hit the end button on your, uh, on your keyboard, it will take you to this page, and then you can start clicking links. Uh, I do have some examples there. You know, well, there's the Quarkus app documentation, it's pretty good. Uh, leads you through some of the more complicated uh, scenarios. Those are three uh, three bots that uh, you know, the Quarkus bot, the Wildfly bot, which is the one I interact with the most, and I added Aaron's uh, Common House automation um, as as another. She says not complex example, but it's doing some other interesting things. Dealing with other objects might be uh, good to look at. And the Quarkus starter. If you're not familiar with Quarkus, you can. Um, uh, you can go there and help you bootstrap a Quarkus project if you don't use the command line. So uh, we've got five minutes, so I'm happy to take questions now, but if you guys want to get up and run to the, the keynote, uh, that's totally fine. But that's all I've got. Thank you again for coming. Hope you enjoy the conference. Safe travels.